All right, we are live. It is 5.02 out here on the West Coast, which means it's 8 o'clock out where most of you guys probably are. Uh, my name is Matt Lasker, joined by co-host Fasil Blango. How's it going, Fasil? What's going on, Coach? How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm chilling. Can't, uh, can't complain. Another Monday. You know, it's a great thing. Start the week off. It's kind of like, oh, I got to get back into it with work. But at the same time, oh, yeah. fresh start. Let's let's get this cracking because I know I'm, I'm loving how uh, how these are coming up every Monday now. And I can just plan on being on here with everybody. So excited to rock. Last week yeah. went well for you. Oh, can't complain. Can't complain. So had a little time to kind of hang out this weekend and just relax. But, uh, you know, in the Carolinas, they have the this little hurricane coming through. So we're just kind of getting prepared for that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. Jason Ross, uh, the guy that's usually on with us, um, yep. he's out there and uh, where is he? He's somewhere out there near you. He's, he's He said the same thing. He said, I'm going to try to be on, but literally it's supposed to hit like right now, wherever he is. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. In the world. So. It's insanely cold right now, which is funny because like it's been 95 to 100 degrees for like the last couple of weeks and it's like 68, 70 degrees. So I know it's it's something's about to be here. It's about to hit. Yeah, yeah, so, right on. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, everyone out there, thanks for joining us. I see a bunch of people already on, already talking. What's up, Coach Manny? Good to see you. Uh, Coach Jolly, what's going on? So, yeah, so we're going to take this first, like, 10 minutes or so just to, just to catch up with everybody. If you guys want to call in, now is the time to do that because we are going to have a live Q&A later where we want you to call in. Uh, but we're just going to kind of go – uh, around. If you guys have anything you want to say about what's going on in your neck of the woods, we'd love to hear it. Uh, we won't probably be harping on COVID too much unless you guys want to call in and talk about it. But me and Facil, I think we'll we'll leave that to, to the audience and if you guys want to get into that. But like I said, we're, uh, Coach Facil is going to do his stick breakdown today of, of how he runs stick. Um, we're waiting for Coach Knudsen. He's coming out of practice, and he'll be joining us after Coach Fasil to break down the top three flex bone runs um, that he has. I've asked him. He runs it all flex bone out of the spread, which for me is perfect because we're always looking for, for new ways to uh, to run something different. I know a lot of you guys haven't chosen your three run plays yet, so I wanted to you know bring in some different run game speakers. This week will be flex bone. I think I got someone for wing T next week. Um, so, uh, we're, we just want to keep the education going. So we'll, we'll kind of go through it that way. After each clinic, we'll have a live Q and a, so please be ready to dial in. If you have any live questions that speak on the air, we'd love to take those on the air. It, it adds a little bit more flavor to the show, but of course you can, you can go ahead and ask it in, in the comments below. If not, um, while we're talking about that, before we get too deep into it, please go check out coach Facile's game ready game ready football on on youtube subscribe to that and if you haven't subscribed to mine please please do um that is how we kind of spread the word organically uh with with these channels getting the word out to more coaches um so yeah so feel free to call in right now guys and we'll just kind of talk talk a little bit as as everyone gets settled coming in um hey one to one to catch up with you coach Vasile. how how'd you like uh, last chance you i know we were talking about that last week a little bit before before it dropped. Uh, oh yeah, did you watch it? Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm already done with it. I'm already mm -hmm. I, I binge watched the show, man. So um, Heck yeah, you know what? This was a this one was a little different because it it, it talked more about the city and yeah. more about Oakland. I, and you're out that way, right? So yep, I, I yep. think that uh, it kind of resonated with you. And uh, you got a good story, and you're gonna have to tell it here in a second. But because <laughs> I know you you posted something on my Facebook, which was actually kind of interesting, but. Um, no, I actually loved it, man. It just gave me an opportunity just to look at some more football. Um, it could not hit at a better time. So um, I, I think that it was just it was, it was just good timing all around, man, and just kind of seeing those guys. And, and now I'm, you know, kind of getting on Google, kind of seeing where those kids are now and how they're doing with COVID and all this other stuff. So, you know, it's just it's been good to kind of follow them and just kind of watch their, uh, you know, their 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 journey along on this way um and uh it's been cool it's been good just it, it was just great just to kind of see somebody else like the west coast how they do things and how that juco works out there i actually had a kid of mine uh that he used to play for me he played quarterback at um san mateo who they ended up playing um a few years back uh, at the juco so it was actually kind of cool just kind of seeing some of the schools they played at um and played against so um it was it's 
it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And I, I didn't realize Oakland was, was changing as much as it was and is now. Um, and it's looking like it's just pushing a lot of folks out of the city, man. So I'll, I'll be interested to see what it looks like, you know, five, 10 years from now. Yeah. It's crazy, man. I mean, I grew up, so I grew up, I born in, I was born in 78 in San Francisco, California. Okay. I grew up, grew up in the city till I was 11. Then we moved out to the East Bay about 20 minutes past Oakland. So I'm about 20 minutes away from Oakland now. Uh, but you know, it's, it's all, it's all Bay area. People from here just love the Bay in general. You know, of course, from the city, you say I'm from the city. If you're from the town, you see it from the town, but, uh, but in general, there's a lot of love out here for the Bay. Um, Laney college, as you were mentioning, I was telling you a funny story. Um, so we play uh, passing league in 20 years ago in high school, you know, seven on seven, basically what it is, right. but, Back, right. back in the day, we used to call it passing league for whatever reason. Off season, we'd go meet up at these colleges, and there'd be thirty teams go there, and you just scrimmage each other and just go in circles and and go through. Um, and and yeah, so we go to Laney College. Uh, we go to Laney College. What's up, Coach Ross? Um, we go to Laney College. It is before my senior year, so just you know, just going in the summer before senior year. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm driving, think I'm dope. I got my five star wheels. I got my 15s. <laughs> I got my f- custom 15s in the trunk. Just, you know, your back, your rear view mirror is just. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't even you can't even see in your rear view mirror anymore. And uh, so and, and so the guys that did that for me was a friend of my brother's, the shop. And and they wanted to put their sticker Precision Auto on, on the front windshield, which, mm. you know, I, my plan was to get rid of that as soon as possible. But, I, you know, they, they hooked me up. They did it for basically nothing. Put all that, right. all that stuff in there. Um, and uh, so I let them put it on there. So you're not even thinking about it, man. I mean, we're going to a passing league tournament. I'm in high school, whatever. Roll right. up to Laney, park on the street. I mean, literally, if, if this is the street that I'm looking at right now, the field is I can look at to the right and see the fence and then the, okay. the field that we're playing on. So I'm like, you know, I wasn't even thinking about it, whatever. So we come so out new. <laughs> and we all, like all the kids, what we all roll up and, park in a row right on the street. Right. And I'm just in the middle of, of the line. And, uh, <laughs> and we come out after the game. We're like, you know, have a good game, whatever, have a good, have a good day. And I'm like, look down, I walk up to where the car is and there's a space between all these cars, right? Where my car, I'm like, I could have swore I parked right here. And then like two minutes later, it dawned on me. I'm like, they got me. I'm fools jacked my oh, car <laughs> in the middle, in the middle of a passing league tournament. In the middle of dang Oakland, and you know, like Laney, as you can see in those in those videos, it's right by Lake Merritt, and that's that's kind of a like a nicer part of town. You walk around the right. lake, and like there's not as much crime. I mean, back in the '90s, right? It, <laughs> it's a different Oakland, as you can see. A lot of gentrification has, has turned on it and, and created a, a little safer environment down there. But right, uh, you know, there's, there's pros and cons of that that we probably don't need to get into that whole political thing, but. <laughs> But anyway, it's just a funny story. Like that's my claim to fame with Laney. I mean, I've been to Oakland a million times. I've worked in Oakland for years in in my previous job. So um, I don't know, just a crazy Laney thing. But the cool thing is that a lot of those kids, especially that Samoan O lineman, they were showing his uh, his youth team. They kept yeah. saying James James Logan. That's actually that team's in our league. Um, and a lot of those videos you guys see uh, that team in red and black that we were just lighting their ass up three times a year. That was, that was James Logan. That's a lot of, a lot of our best highlights are against them. So anyway, uh, that's, Sweet. that's my Laney story. What's up coach Ross. You guys, uh, you guys button down the hatches or what, man? Hey bro, you're on, uh, you're on mute somehow. Anyway. So yeah, I love last chance you, uh, I honestly, I took it a little uh, personal cause I was like, I, I, the whole time I'm like, the football is just, it's like the Mississippi teams, uh, yes. the EMCC and, and, and those other the indie teams, like there, those players are just like monsters. And they're clearly like ex Florida state players, ex Alabama players. Right, they right. look like it, right? Like those dudes are like, they look like the prototypical athletes. And then they come out to Oakland. It's just like dudes just out of high school that they did just found around town. I mean, don't get exactly. me wrong. They're, they're better than that, but Compared to that, I was like, oh, I hope people don't like hate this season because the footballs, but but I think everyone is attaching to the town and, and the coach, right? You're like Coach Bean seems like a pretty cool guy. Oh yeah, he does, man. Like I said, it's 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 definitely different from the other ones, like you said. Everybody's got the D one rejects and 
all these guys that was just, you know, going to be there for a year and then they're going somewhere else anyway. But those yeah. guys, I think he said like what, 75% or 80% of their team was actually just from the area. So, right. um, you know, that, no scholarships. that, that was, yeah, that was pretty dope, man. I actually like that. I like that. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, I think hey, we'll probably, we need to talk about this at some point, but, um, I thought it was crazy. They went through what, like three quarterbacks, three, four quarterbacks. Everyone yeah, got hurt. Was and now they're trying to get a receiver now. Like, that was how crazy, that? Huh? You know? So, um, yeah, that, no, that, that was that, interesting, that was, man. Yeah. That was crazy how they went through all that. And yeah, well, that's, that's the last thing I'll say on it. It was like, you don't really think about that. So out in Mississippi where they can create this huge space, this huge land. What's up, Coach Jolly? Um, they can create all this space and new new facilities and all these things. And the kids can live on campus under scholarship. You start thinking about the Bay, which is like they don't have all that space. And even if you got an apartment with your friends, you'd still be paying four grand split between these college students that aren't working. Right. So like that's a whole nother factor that I didn't even think about. Uh, the difference between JUCOs out here and out there. Um, so anyway, that, I just thought it. I, I'm glad people are are enjoying it because I I got a kick out of it and I just love you know the Bay representing like they did. But but the football, I mean, it was fun football. I mean, at least you know they they it was fun to watch at least. Coach oh, yeah. Jolly, how you doing, man? What's going on out there in Florida? Good man. We're still here. They're still letting us practice. We'll we'll see if we have a season or not, man. They keep pushing us out. They they pushed us, but. We got another really in-depth um, uh, packet. It was like 30 pages of return to play uh, guidelines. So it's like, dude, there's like a lot of thought and intelligence and effort put in by the FH by the FHSAA to try and make this happen. So, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that, that they'll let us have something at some point. I don't mind. And it's, it's, it's a really – in-depth uh, guidelines and, and things that we have to do, but they're all doable in my opinion. But I, I was wondering if any of you guys have seen anything like that from your states. It's like it came straight from the FHSAA. It was like 30 pages of stuff. No, I haven't seen anything like that. You got anything like that outlining stuff, Cecil? No, nothing yet. Nothing yet. I think we're, we're still in the holding pattern and – I think there's still, to be honest with you, everything is going to get pushed to the spring. They're just trying to figure out. I think they're trying to outline some of this stuff. And and to be truthful, I think what they're really trying to do is is kind of see how other uh, organizations and states are doing it before they really start, uh, you know, populating any, uh, you know, information that they're going to send out to everyone. So I, we're, we're still on the standstill. But I actually, I was talking to couple of my other uh, friend coaches who I, I coach Pop Warner with, they're going to continue to have a season. Um, in fact, we just had a Zoom call about an hour ago just to kind of talk about what that's going to look like, um, you know, going forward. So I'll, I'll get something that looks like football, um, you know, for the next few weeks, and then they're going to have a, a shorter season. But they're, they're still going to play football just locally uh, with some of the Pop Warner teams um, that's going to be around here. So I'll have um, – we have tiny mites, so we'll have uh, seven and nine year olds. So it's basically a nine U team. Nice, cool. Yeah, that's something. I, I'll, hey, I'll take back. It, Mackie Jason, had um, Mackie had some guys on earlier in the week, and one of them was Coach Schiffman, and he coaches up in I forget where, um, a small Division three college, and he said that they're going to have a five game season in the spring. And the way he was talking about it, I was like, you know, that might be the way to go for everybody, where it's like. Uh, you have a five game season in the spring and then that can be like your glorified spring football and then everyone goes away and then you come back summer ready to go for real again. I think that might be a, a way to get some football this year rather than just because I, I can't I'm, like I was thinking about you guys. I can't imagine like California and other places that have just outright canceled it for up for the whole year. Yeah, I mean, they literally. Well, so. The CDC and and the governing bodies didn't cancel for the whole year. They pushed it, but my okay. league my league voted, so we're going to be independent and in come winter um, and just get it in. Um, whatever five te teams we can find, whatever three teams we can find, we're going to do something. Um, okay. But yeah, I, Jason. Oh, good. Jason's mic's working. What's up, man? Ah, uh, went out again, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> Jesus, bro. Hey, while he fixes it, I had a question before he get, you guys get started. 
Yeah. Matt, do you guys do you remember what amp you had in that in that car? <laughs> oh, bro, Kenwood. What are you talking about, man? All right, just making sure. And my deck was a Kenwood. The ones that you know you could detach the face like you were. Oh a yeah, man. Uh, oh yeah, bro. <laughs> Dude, I was I was rolling. It's all like digital LED, like man. I was you big time, man. Oh man, oh, bro. my five star r- r- rims, dude. It was it was badass. My uh, eighty nine. That's hilarious, man. That 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 concept was that was the same thing happening in South Florida at the same time and all the way over the other side of the country. I mean, I always you know you always think of like uh like the different East Coast West Coast type of stuff, but that's hilarious that you had yeah. the sales. Like, wow, man, that sounds like. Yeah, that's home, baby. I mean that that documentary. I was I was getting all the feels. So I'm like, yeah. man, I just love to see the Bay represent. Hey, Adam, Coach Adam, wh- where are you guys? I forgot where you guys live. Where you guys just got canceled? Oh, uh, cool. Um, Jason, still? Yeah, Jason's still out. Man, it must it must be the it must be the hurricane, dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, we live, man. <laughs> Yeah, Coach Manny, I agree. I mean, any anything will be better. Any, anything's better than nothing. Anything's better than nothing, honestly. All right, cool. Um, yeah, well, you know what? I uh, Unless anyone has anything else to talk about, I mean, I wanted to talk a little bit about Mike Tyson. Did you oh, hear? that's oh. your shirt, dude. What's up with that, man? I don't know. I'm just – I'm like, some people collect shoes. Some people collect hats. I just collect random T-shirts that I just – someone puts in front of me online, and I'm like, oh. I just got that Deion Sanders one too. I'll show you guys that next time. Well, I, I, you mentioned it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask. I was gonna ask you if you could show the shirt, but since you, I was like, oh, yeah. not? Like, yeah. Since we're talking about, it, I want to see it. So uh, my, my two my two favorite boxers, Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a little too young for Muhammad. Now, trust me, I, I got respect for Muhammad Ali. I'm a I'm a boxing fan. I don't even like f with MMA at all because I'm like too. I'm too like stuck on on boxing to give in to MMA, but like I, I love boxing. I love Muhammad, but Tyson coming up in the in the early '90s, mid '90s when I was like uh, 11, 12, 13, yep. dude was the scariest man on the planet to me. And I yep. like, oh my god, dude, when he would get in the ring and just stare these fools down before the fight when they were when they come together at the middle of the ring, that shit used to just like yeah, uh, get me so hyped. Did you ever see the um, the thing where he wrote a poem about that 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 pregame um, thing uh, ritual that he went through? Did you ever see that? No, I wish you know, I, I did. I want to I want to find it and post it on your Facebook group because he's talking about he's like oh you know um I've been I've been I've been having nightmares about this guy for six months and and, <laughs> and, and now it's coming. He says and I'm not, I'm not showing any fear and uh, I'm I'm licensing up I'm, I'm putting the tape on real tight. I'm thinking about punching. Through the glove and my bones piercing the glove, and he's like <laughs> says all the stuff. He's like, and I, I just stare him down with no hesitation, and he looks for just a half a second, and I know I've got him because I saw I found the chink in his arm. He's just, I was like, dude, I'm I'm afraid now. Watching this, you know. <laughs> he is have you, have you guys seen? Have you seen him work out lately? Yes. Oh yeah, that's yes. Dude, he, he still looks good. Like I mean, he's fifty plus, and he still, you know, is. I would not get in the ring for him no. with him for three minutes. No, nope. you you couldn't pay me enough right now because he's still swinging hard. Yep, bro, he is. He would just light your. He would. Oh my god. So Roy Jones, like after Tyson went down, like Roy Jones was the next like great one to me. Like for now, Whitaker, he was okay. You know, I like I like you know, uh, fucking all the new guys, but Roy Jones, that fool played in a CBA basketball game, basically the, what the what the D League is now in the morning, and went. Called his shot. He used to say, like, oh, I'm going to knock this fool out in the third round. I'm going to knock this dude out in the fourth round. He played a basketball game in the morning, semi-pro, but whatever, and then went and defended his title at night and knocked this dude out at the at the, at the the uh, round that he said he was going to do it. I mean, just act like that dude, he could probably have played football. He probably could have played hoops. Oh, yeah. He probably could have done a lot of different things. He just was a pure athlete. And I think that's why boxing's kind of gone down. It's like, these dudes, these athletes aren't choosing boxing anymore, right? Like they're no. like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and just play football or, or whatever, right? right? It's like boxing, it, it's not the best idea, but I miss it, man. I, I don't know if it'll ever come back with MMA dominating like it does, but I miss boxing, man. That was a yeah, like, right. that, that fight, that fight's in September, right? Yeah, it's coming up. Like both of them, yeah, are like they're in pretty damn good shape. 
And I heard they're going to make some good money off of this too, man. Like I'm hearing like 15 to 20 mil. I'll, I'll pay for it. Shit, man. Those are my oh, two I'll favorites. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm saying, man. Oh, yeah, Manny, Manny, when he would come out out there with no socks, towel, and just looking that dude like staring into his soul, like I'm about <laughs> to snatch your whole being out of you right now. In like three seconds. Oh God. All right. Without further ado, let's get to it, man. Uh Coach Vasil. Uh, you know, only because I think it's gonna we just need all the bandwidth possible because he's gonna yep. share his screen. Yeah. But call <laughs> Definitely call back in if you have any questions about uh, about uh, his. What yeah, I'm he looking does. forward to it, man. Okay, cool. Guys. Thanks, bud. All right, coach. So, Coach Fasil, obviously everyone knows him by now, but he's going to go ahead and uh, and go through his stick, how he runs stick. Uh, I'm excited about it because it's a little different than how I do it, um, and probably then a little different than how all y'all do it. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to kick back with you guys, watch what Coach has to say, and and then we'll uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, and obviously, you know, put your comments and questions in the chat if you have them. Uh, we'll probably try to let Coach Facile go through unless there's a natural break and it's a question about something specific. Uh, we'll probably try to hold most of them toward the end. Uh, after he's done, we could read them out loud. But, uh, but yeah, so put your questions in the chat or just call in afterward. But uh, go ahead, Coach Facile. Take it away, bud. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, okay. Got it. All right, let me know if that worked. Yep, you're up. All right, cool. All right, so stick. Stick's one of my favorite quick games to run. Um, for me, it's been pretty easy to teach. And then also on top of that, I've, I've had a couple of opportunities where we've had quarterbacks that didn't have great arms that could complete this pass make good decisions and all in all, it's just been a, a huge play for us. So um, one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, first is just kind of how I like to run it. I like to run it out of three by one. Um, I also run it out of two by two. Um, and then also I'll have two backs in the backfield just to kind of help with uh, the protection. So um, coach, I'm going to be on huddle. So um, if you hear any questions or see any questions, just shout those out. Cause I'm not going to be able to see them, but um, okay. as I'm going through this, you know, we can uh, walk and talk through it. So, yeah, I'll um, monitor that and I'll, I'll break. I'll cut you off if it's a good if it's a good one that kind of goes in the flow. OK. All right. Cool. So, hey, you know what? Honestly, uh, one of the first things I wanted to talk about uh, and just kind of see what kind of defenses do people usually see? Because I, I feel like at the youth level, um, you know, it's it's a lot of people get a five man front. Some get a four man front. I see a lot of, you know, teams, especially at the middle school level where in my league, we will have a lot of four man fronts and fives, but you know how they play their coverage. Uh, we either have single high safety or two high. Most of the time I get too high, but you know, I've also seen it where we'll have one high, everybody man's underneath. So I'm actually just kind of curious as to, um, you know, how folks uh, play it uh, for the yeah. most part. So I'm, and I'm actually kind of curious is if it's, you know, regionally do, you know, people just play a certain defense or just depends on the coach uh, too as well. So, yeah, you know, put in I, your I, location, I, put in your location and uh, in the most common defenses you see uh, as many as you, as many as you want. I, I'd love to hear the flavor, but that's a great question. So yeah. David and Hunter the, is, is where I'm blanking on people's location. I should know David's location, but here we go. We got some coming in, but I'll put right, them cool. up on the screen. So David Hunter, four, 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 two, five. Jeez. That's a, Coach Manny, he's down in SoCal. I know that. We talked about that last week. He gets a 5-3 and then a mixture of four-man fronts. He sees a 4-2-5 down there, too, in the in the, in the the Valley, huh? You guys are running yeah, that four, in the Valley, Coach Manny? Oh, yeah. 4-2-5 four, four, has been pretty popular, especially within the last few years, so I'm not surprised. Adam's out there in Michigan. He sees a 5-3 or 4-4. Four, four. That's pretty much like us. Coach Jason only saw a 5-3-5. Five, five. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. North Carolina, my bad, man. And Coach David is in Tennessee. That's right. I'm sorry, guys. I uh, it's a Monday, end of my Monday. I feel like one, of, you know, on Tuesdays when you get those kids when they get back to school for the first time and they come to that practice. Um, oh yeah, at that first day of school that they were, their brain is just fried. That's how I feel right now. For some reason. All right, <laughs> Baton Rouge, lots of four, three, two high safeties on third and fourth grade. Dang, Coach Kevin. Man, wow. Come on. I really want to play these. 
Okay, so as those coming in, I'll, I'll show uh, what this is kind of like a hybrid four two five. So I'll start with that. Um, so basically, for the the stick play, my my biggest thing is just getting the Y into open grass and just allowing for him to read the play. So I will start with the outside receivers. Um, what we'll do here, we'll have them outside automatic release on a fly. All right, and that honestly is going to be our first read. So I always tell my quarterback just to go ahead and peek that. We want to go ahead and throw that outside uh, receiver. If he's open and we feel like we have the matchup, I don't mind him taking that for most instances outside of, you know, maybe it being fourth and, you know, four or five, and we're just trying to pick up a first down. Um, but most of the time, I'm going to give my quarterback the freedom. If you see that and you feel like we have the matchup, especially the corners walking up a little bit and we can take a shot over top, let's go ahead and do that. If for no other reason we don't complete it, then at least it's going to open up the safety. Safety's going to maybe try to come over and help or that corner. Uh, they'll start backing off, which will give us an opportunity to start doing some other things underneath. Um, so next, uh, so we'll talk about the outside release with the receiver uh, coach, on the back. Coach, yes, sir. How, how often do you do you see them taking that shot? I mean, is it something where they really feel like if they see it, they're going to shoot it? Or would you say that's that's not typical? Or how often do you actually use that, do you think? Or <sighs> So, so the one thing I'm I'm always preaching to my to my kids is just making sure that we're looking at the concept side. So I would say at least thirty percent of the time we're we're going to throw that on the outside. Nice. Um, and then I also have a tag uh, for a post which comes open later in the game. We'll talk about that here in a minute too. Where it's that that right there has been the biggest one, especially if we hit the stick a few times. Then we'll start hitting this post behind this safety, which has been huge for us. And that works in either the two high or the one high safety look. So um, the backside progression always is going to be a slant for us. Um, and then if the corner's off, I'll allow for my my uh, my left my left receiver to just go ahead and run a hitch, or even what we call a Richards, which is just a now route, just turn if the corner's off. We want to take that. Like, I don't mind him looking there, especially if we feel like, you know, the linebacker is kind of overplaying the three by one, If we, especially if we have the tailback over here, as you can see here, uh, yeah. then we can throw that, that backside slant. So stick, this is the, 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 one of the bigger differences on how I run stick and how I've had some conversations with some, some other air raid coaches. So um, basically I have my wide read and the leverage of this linebacker. So, Sometimes we'll see this linebacker. He'll either play either over top of this Y or a lot of the folks that uh, or a lot of teams that we see now, they're playing inside leverage, trying to take away this inside route. So what I like to do and what we've been teaching our Ys to do is to get behind this linebacker and settle up behind the linebacker on his inside leg. Mm. And and with that being said, what, what typically happens is the linebackers always looking inside at the quarterback and the tailback and looking in the backfield to see what's going on. He always gets lost because he runs by his face. He sits in. And what we're doing here, we're going to have our F run right at the line of scrimmage and run it out here. Oh, let me go ahead and back that up. Uh, and run it out right here. So now we're putting this linebacker into conflict. All right. So now, if now don't get me wrong. If he's lined up head over top, of the why we want him to come stick inside. And I know a lot of air raid coaches, regardless of what's going on, they want you to go across that linebacker's face. For me, I have found that it has been pretty good for us to line, to get behind this linebacker and sit in open grass. Mm -hmm. And what happens is his linebacker always chases that out because he's not paying attention to this why, because his eyes are always inside to the backfield, especially at this age, at middle school level, they're not really, looking at what's happening with the number two they're just looking at what's in front of them and what's happening in the backfield so that's helped for us to get a couple more yards out of that it's a good hole shot we catch it and get it up field and honestly if you think about it too if, if i'm sitting inside the linebacker's leg right here if he doesn't move throughout that play then the out's going to be there but most linebackers are going to move at the snap and if he knows he's got to get to that flat he's going to naturally start fading out there off of the rip and then now our Y is just going to sit in open grass and and take that but really we just want to read the leverage of that linebacker which is going to be our biggest key so um ideally for me like i mentioned i just rather him sit behind the linebackers gives us a couple more yards usually it's like at a seven ish yards and we want to sit in open grass show hands catch it and get up field and i have a couple of cut ups where we'll talk about that too as well 
where, you know, we work on drilling this every day. Like I basically I'll just have these two receivers here and we'll run stick. He'll go, he'll run, settle up, F runs out. And now the quarterback, he's reading the linebacker. And really, he's just reading the hips. If the hips are pointed towards him, he's going to throw that out. If he if his hips turns and starts chasing that F, he's going to throw that inside. And that's, that's been one of the big that's that's been one of the bigger things, coaches, is, is really teaching the kids to understand hip angles and and understand where they're turning at and where they're trying to go. And we want to throw opposite of that. And it's a hard concept. It even took me. Even when I was playing football, even in high school and going into college, it still took me some time to kind of understand that. So, you know, I could understood exactly where to throw that ball, how to throw it and throw it in in spots where necessarily a linebacker may look like he's covering him, but he's really not because his hips are turned towards you. It is almost impossible for him to open up his hips, turn and run and catch this F receiver if he's running that out. So yeah, those a, are that's a huge point, bro. Like, honestly, we, we do teach that with the corners. Because especially when we when we run wide corner, we we teach them to peek at the the hip angle of that of that cornerback to the to the concept side. I've never thought about doing that with the linebackers, but that is like honestly that and this has been my biggest plight this whole offseason trying to figure out how to make the the quarterbacks understand what that linebacker that specific linebacker that you're talking about right now like how to make sure the quarterback as soon as possible can identify which one he should throw to between those two guys. Uh, exactly. And I love I love that because I mean it's it's true. If his he could be standing over there where the Y is, and it looks like he could be blocking the F, but if his hips are pointed inside, it's fuck. He's he's done. He can't get there. I love that. Sorry, there's no way. I mean, there's no way. No, coach. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's that's a great point. So um so that that's the biggest key for our quarterback. And literally, he is taking the ball. And a lot of people they they'll do either it's a catch and throw. For my quarterback, the better rhythm for him, either he just takes it and take one big step drop back, and then he's looking to throw. So it's still part of our quick game series. Yeah. Um, and and really he's just reading the concept side. So, and one of the things that we've we found that have worked very well too. Um, I'll move this line, move this tail back over here. Sometimes we'll shoot him out, depending on how well we're protecting up front. Um, the other thing is too, sometimes I'll keep him in and have a six-man protection just to make sure. We have a clean box for that read for our quarterback. So he's just standing tall, making a good throw and, and being done with it. Yeah. So so this this is this is our, our base. I like to run stick kind of starting out um, all of our seven on seven games. They already know we're going to run stick the first play because it's going to tell you a lot about how the, the linebackers are playing, who's playing off, who's playing up. And it's just it's just a lot of bit, just good bang for your buck. And we can still like, you know, even if we have a concept that's running on the right side at stick. I can still call up front if the linebackers start cheating over here and they want to line up, you know, head over head here. We can still call an inside zone run up here and we still have five in the box and we can block that up and have big runs, too. So just it, I just feel like just stick has just been great for us. Um, it's easy to teach uh, the quarterback that I'm going to show a couple of cut ups. He was a wide receiver last year. He's just now jumping into the, the quarterback position and he's starting to understand the concepts and it's been easy for him to pick up. So. Um, and he, he doesn't have a rocket arm. I mean, he, he reads just just as well as everybody else. But like I've, I've told him is there's a difference between being a quarterback and being someone who can actually throw a football. So we got kids that can throw the football a mile. But if they're not making good decisions, it's just it's it's going to be a mute point anyway. Yeah. Hey, right now, since you took a natural breath, I'm going to sneak this one in. Coach Manny um, asking about range. Um, what's the max range do you feel a QB can throw? That fly route. If the QB is five yards back and the R is 15 yards to the side, uh, 15 yards upfield becomes a 25 yard throw. So, how do you ha have you ever had any issues with that, or what do you what do you think the max range is for that? Uh, well, for this play, since it's quick game and our our outside guy is actually the first person is in our pro progression. What we're doing, he's taking a big step, and he's really only have to throw maybe 25 yards, right? Because he's th he's throwing it quick. If he, find, if he finds that he has the matchup, he's taking one step back, and once they're even, he's just going to throw the ball. So we, it's never going to be an opportunity where he's getting 30, 40 yards down the field, and then he's throwing the ball there because our outside receiver is our first person. So he understands outside, inside, and then the check release. Yeah. So that's that's our progression. So it's, it, it, Yeah, so it won't, it won't have to be too far. It's just going to be 20 to 25 yards. 
at most. I mean, and, and we run this on a goal line, too. And I actually have a, uh, a cut up on that where we just run a little quick fade. Um, and again, it just doesn't have to be, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a long throw. It's just, you know, getting the leverage. And, and if the corner's inside and we want to throw it to the outside and, you know, we feel like we have a matchup, we're going to take it. Yeah. No, that's a good point. I mean, it's literally just a rocker step and go. So it, you, it's almost like you're, like you said, even if his max was 25 yards, that's all he's really trying to get anyway. That's all he needs. Okay. Cool. Right on. Yep. And then the other thing I like to do out of this, sometimes we'll tag a post. So the corners will start backing off a little bit. We throw it deep, even if we don't complete it. All right. Um, actually, let me do that again. Okay. So now we have this safety. He's coming up. He sees the stick, and now he wants to try to make a play on that stick and try to take that way. We'll just tag a post for the outside guy, and now we'll just run that post behind him, hmm. which which always results in a touchdown. Nice. Love it. So, so that's that's it's just an easy tag for us. It's very easy. Um, you know, I, I think that, like I said, just stick has just been just a, a, a compact play. It's easy to teach. Um, it's easy to, to, to rep and practice. Um, we'll do this out of three by one. And then I'll also show you guys the two by two real quick. Uh, let's see. Um, so we'll have a tailback here. We'll put the F there. And nothing changes with the reads. It's still outside, inside, check release. And then what happens is, since they're running a the 425, they're probably going to put this extra backer here on the three by on the three by two side. So that I mean this is to any defense, they're still reading this as a three by two. There's three receivers on this side, there's two eligibles on this side. So they're still gonna sometimes they might maybe try to split the difference here. I've seen that. All right. So again, mm -hmm. we're, we're still we're still running an outside release. All right. My Y is still running this, running the stick. All right. But now the difference is now my tailback, he's running this flat route here. All right. And and I've seen a couple of other guys, they'll some run out a flat and then some do a swing. I like to run a flat because it puts pressure on his linebacker. Now he has to make a decision to either come up and run to the flats with his tailback or he has to sit back and, and hold that stick. And again, because we're going on the outside, his his eyes are looking naturally inside at the quarterback and tailback. So we're just going to run that out there. And most of the time that linebacker is going to chase that because he has flat responsibilities anyway. The, the only time that I've really seen like, you know, teams that if you have a really good tailback and you just like to just get the ball to him in open space and just let him shoot out here, then I can see the swing being a good route you know, for folks to do that. But just generally for me, I like to put pressure on that linebacker, put him in conflict, make him make a decision quick. And with us running that route right in his face, now he has to make a decision whether he's going to go out or not. Sometimes uh, someone runs a swing out there, the linebacker is not going to chase that until the ball gets thrown out there. So, you know, that just for me, I'm just more of a, a, a flat guy than a, a swing guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of the, that's one of the questions I ask all these yeah. high school guys. Every time I, I, uh, I interview them because it's so different. I mean, I, I, as a running back, I personally would want to see the field as I catch the ball. So I've, I think I've put that a little bit into my own bias, but uh, I oh, totally sure. understand why you're saying what you're saying. And it's making me want to try it out. I mean, I'm probably not going to get a try till next freaking year, but um, yeah, that's, uh, that's something to think about. I, everyone out there, what do you guys do? Swing or shoot? I want to see swing or shoot. Let's take a quick poll. All right, man. So while they do that, you keep keep rolling. So so just Mike Hardwick is asking your progression. So it's outside R, Y, yep. then T. Yeah. Correct. Outside, inside, check release. So he's looking at how outside, you teach it. Outside, inside. Outside, inside, check release. That's how we that's how we teach it. So and it's gonna be like that for most of our plays too. So now it's just an easy progression for our quarterbacks. And now they don't have to worry about okay, for this play. It, you know, it is, you know, one, two or three It's the inside, then it's the outside and all that stuff. No, for the most part, for most of my plays is outside, inside check release. So that gives uh, plenty of opportunities. We're going to take the shot on the outside if we can. 
then we're going to look inside to the concept, which is the stick. And then at that point, if you don't see it, then we're just hitting the check release, which is the tailback anyway. And, you know, sometimes like, you know, if they overplay the concept side, then we'll still have the gift on the back side. As I mentioned before, with all of my quarterbacks, if they're giving us a slant and you see open grass and you know that you could get five yards out of that, go ahead and take it. Don't even worry about the concept. And we do that a lot, too. So mm-hmm. I'll show you a couple of cut ups real quick, coach, as people are probably yeah, are still putting in. OK, cool. All right, so this is our 707 season right now. I know we talked about this last week. Um, this is the quarterback. Uh, he's the wide receiver that you know turned into a quarterback literally about a month or two ago, um, full time. So you know he's still uh, trying to trying to pick up and grasp the concepts. So stick was one that we lit. there'd be times like during 707, as I mentioned before, I will run the same concept all the way down the field. I don't care if the defense knows it. I just want to make sure that they're executing the play and they're trying to. Make mm-hmm. sure that he's his eyes are being trained correctly. I'm looking outside, I'm looking inside, and then I'm checking release. So um, now this video, you're not you'll see it. Um, you know, after a while here, this is where the sticks is going to end up at. So for the first play, all right. So we're running the stick. So my F, he's running this out. He probably ran a little too deep, and then I got to. My why he's going to sit down in this open grass, as you can see here. He's sitting, he's settling, he's catching a ball, and he should be getting upfield. And this is one thing we had to get on him is that, and I, I'm sure a lot of coaches get this, especially during 707, they're trying to make the spectacular play instead of just catching and getting upfield. And I'll run it full to, uh, real time here. He's catching, he's going sideways, getting upfield. No, catch the ball, get upfield, go vertical as quickly as possible. And that was one of the things that we repped all practice. He was just, you know, just got caught in the game and, um, you know, tried to make the the touchdown instead of trying to catch for seven and, and getting nine. So that's right. that was one of the bigger ones that we just wanted to make sure that we just continue to preach and making sure he understands, catch the ball, get upfield. Trust, trust me and believe me, when you have those pads on, if you catch it and get upfield and we can, you know, turn five yards into seven yards, we're doing great. Um, this is another one that we did. So we ran a stick on the goal line. If you ran on the goal line, and the only thing that we did as far as the change, uh, as we were just talking about on the outside, it's just a quick little fade. If we feel like we have the matchup, we'll take the fade. If not, then we're just gonna run the stick concept as always. So we'll run this through. So F runs it out, the Y sits. Nice. Again, I like how it's due to the opposite shoulder. That's set on this, baby. All day. All day. Mm-hmm. And, it, and again, just part of the quick game package. You know, it's just I'm catching and I'm throwing quick. You know, it's easy to protect against because we're not holding up long. And we're throwing and we're going to run this on the right side. Now, the one thing my Y did do. In the second game, this was the second game of the day. He caught it, got upfield, and you'll be able to tell how much more yards he ended up getting by just getting upfield as quickly as possible. So he settles and settles, ball thrown to the outside, catch. We're getting straight upfield. Yeah, again, on a rhythm. Exactly. And, you know, this is quick game. You know, we're getting 15 yards out of that. When was this film? Just a few months ago? Uh, this was actually filmed in June. Nice. Yeah, this this literally just happened. And again, as you can see, guys, this linebacker, even when we're not even running the ball, he's still looking at the quarterback. His eyes are inside. That's what they're taught as a zone. They're looking at the quarterback and just kind of seeing where his eyes are. Okay. And because he was lined up over the wire, we, we ran it, I believe, inside of him on this time. But still, if we can get outside of him and he chases us out, we're good. We'll just catch and get up here. Love it. So, so that's that, those are the bigger ones that I like to do again, just outside, inside, check release. Um, two by two, I like to run it out of that. Uh, we can also run it out of uh, two backs in the backfield. I'll delete this, show you guys that.
Good. Yeah. We got some questions coming in, so this will be good. Cool. We'll see it out of two back. All right. So again, outside guy running outside release, looking to uh, make that play over top. Then we also have this Y. He's going to settle up inside leg of that linebacker. And then now we're going to shoot this F to the flats here. All right. And then tight uh, tailback. It's a couple things we can do. It just depends on what they're doing up front. Generally, I like to keep tailback in again, just to keep the pocket clean. Protection is the biggest thing for me that I want to stop first. Um, and if I feel like this linebacker starts to shoot, uh, start blitzing gaps, they're trying to create, uh, you know, some havoc and, and trying to, you know, make something happen. Sometimes we'll just shoot the tailback out this way, but it just depends. Whoops. It just depends what's, what's going on throughout the course of the game. But most of the time, if we feel like our five can protect up front and, you know, we're taking care of business, then I'll shoot that tailback out. Um, if not, then I'll leave him in and just make it sure that my quarterback's looking on that concept side first and most of the time that's that's all we need or we're just taking this quick slant yeah right on yeah yeah so that's perfect i mean yeah we we run this out of two backs really i did have to do it a couple of times just for that extra uh protection piece we just kept seeing so many blitzes out of this but uh yeah that is perfect all right so cool so let's get into unless you have anything else you wanted to show we got some questions that are actually some really great questions okay um, Barb, boy. Okay, cool. So this, me and David, I swear, we have like this shared brain brain waves or something. Um, the biggest part that stuck out to me was having that why go behind the linebacker versus we, I at least systematically teach that to go in front of them. So that guy, in my mind, has to pick quicker, like quarterback can see if he's going to stay with that why or, or go with the F. I would think quicker, but uh, – so Coach Hunter's question is, do you ever see any impact um, with a linebacker in your Y as he's going out to cover the flats? I'm assuming, you know, him impacting the Y, trying to go mm -hmm. behind him. You ever see anything like that? Every now and then, yes. But again, what I'm telling my Y is he's going to read leverage. So, you know, even if he feels if he's on top and he doesn't feel like he can get outside this guy to sit, it's not it, it's not required if the linebacker yeah, if he's playing inside like this, then we want to get behind him. That's that's ultimately what I want. But if he's playing even just a, a slight inside shade on that shoulder, then he could go inside. Just whatever you feel like is going to get you a free, clean release and get you to the spot as quickly as possible and sell in that open grass, that's going to be the biggest thing. So ideally, I'd like for him to get behind the linebacker because that's going to give us a few more yards, but it's not um, it's not required. He can just go inside. It's just based on leverage and where he feels like he can get um, into the linebacker. And quite honestly, I remember how mummy, he, he had uh, a video where he was talking about that and he was almost talking as if he wanted them to collide because at that point, then I'm throwing to the, yeah, the F it's a pick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's a pick. It's a pick route. It's a pick route, but you're just running your route. So love it. Uh, that's true. But yeah, that, that's, that's actually a great question. And, and I get uh, the one thing I'm, I'm starting to see now too, is a line, uh, linebackers are starting to just man this. And they'll man the Y. And then what I'll tell him, if you feel like it's man, then he doesn't have to settle. He could just go ahead and slant through it. Yeah. Perfect. All right, cool. Yep. Next question. This thing will pop up. All right. Why is his inside leg up? Uh, inside. We'll start there. Inside leg up or, or, or outside leg up. So for us, uh, his inside leg is up. So for most of my routes, and I, I know some, some of the air raid guys, they'll have their inside leg back, especially if it's going to be uh, something that's going to be quick inside, like the mesh or, um, you know, even something that they're going to push off and get to the outside. But it timed out well for us whenever his outside leg is up. So he's going one, two, three, four, five, six. And then his, his, his next foot, his right foot is going, sticking at the top and sitting. So that's that's that seven steps for us. And I know I said yards before, but it's mostly seven steps. But the, the biggest thing is, is, again, getting behind that linebacker and and really eating up this cushion. And then now we could just settle, uh, settle on open grass. And then now we're going to put some conflict between the linebackers and then actually making the safety uh, choose. And then most of the time, a lot of the safety, especially at this level, they're going to they're going to have their eyes inside. They're going to look at that stick. 
that ball gets thrown to them a couple of times, especially in front of their face, they're going to start getting a little antsy. They're going to walk up, and then that's when we'll tag that the outside uh, receiver on a post uh, to get behind him. So um, that's that's what's worked well for us. Yeah, love it, love it. Yeah, I mean, so that's a good that's a good call out though because I've I've gone I've switched from teaching yards mm-hmm. to steps, and I think steps I think teaching it with the steps is 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 a way where these kids there there's a lot less gray area. Um, than yards, right? Like we just want, I want to be as specific <laughs> with these little kids as possible. Oh, so for I, sure. like, for sure. I like that you're teaching the steps. Yeah, and you know what's funny is, Coach, like what, the one thing I realize is that you tell them to go 10 yards, they never go 10 yards. Mm-hmm. And most of them are going 10 feet anyway because it was funny. I actually had a kid uh, a few weeks ago. I told him to run. I said, I want you to run uh, a seven-yard plant and then post. And he ran, he ran literally seven steps. And then I asked him, I'm like, wait, how many feet is in a yard? And <laughs> he couldn't even answer that. So I was like, I said, you're not running this far enough. And then at that point, I, I started realizing more. I was like, the steps are a lot easier for them to understand because the steps, they, they already know it. They're, they're not thinking about it in a, in a yards perspective. Some of the fields that we play on don't have lines or don't have the hash marks for lines. So it's mm. hard to count off the. The yards, yeah. so the steps has just been a lot easier for us to 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 count those off versus okay, well, you know, if I'm telling you 15 yards, then you know, that's that's 45 steps, really. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. Um, but the steps is easier. Yeah, keep it simple. All right, next one isn't much of a question, but just an idea. I'm out of three by one, uh, the two inside guys, number two and number three. Um, Basically, double. He, what he says is run trips. We ran double stick with two and three, and then swing the RB to that side. Um, and yeah, I mean it's almost like a it's almost like a Mike Mike Hardwick R flare, um, right? Basically, just like a screen, but without without the actual blocking because you could. Yeah, that's that's pretty. I kinda Maybe like something that. like that. Yeah, cool. I like that idea, like that. Coach Coach Victor. Come on, put some film on it for us. Bring it on here. We'd love to see it in action. Oh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. All right, cool. What other questions? Um, the rest is just Mike Hardwick blowing up our chat. Cool, man. Well, I really appreciate this, man. I love it. Uh, any other variations uh, that you guys out there want to see or if you guys have other variations, please put it in the comments below now or even after this is posted tomorrow on the YouTube channel so we can continue the conversation about it. But thanks, Coach Vasile. I love this. Uh, it's giving me some stuff to think about, uh, two things in particular that I really want to really think hard about now that I have a whole nother season to <laughs> to reconsider my whole plan. <laughs> that, that, that's going to give you a lot of time to think now, Coach. I'm telling you, man. Oh, man. So, yeah, so cool, man. I really appreciate it. If you guys want to see more from Coach Vasile, as always, you know, go to his um, Game Ready Football <clears throat> YouTube channel. Um, he's got all kinds of great quick game, drop back game stuff on there. And honestly, Coach Vasil, if you email him, I know for a fact he gets back to you guys quickly. So um, 